this is so that I can utilize technology and at the same time ease the grading burden. Okay, I think. So that's, that's the goal that you feel for yourself, that that would be beneficial to you. That would be beneficial to me, which I think makes me then a better teacher because I can focus more on like the learning that's taking place. And it is important for me to be able to assess their learning, to know where they are, but I'm just getting bogged down. Okay. And I feel that I'm just kind of stuck in the grading and assessing, which is just a piece of their education. So I know that the last time we talked, I was just like overwhelmed with all of, I mean, not just the grading, but then common formatives. Um, we did take that day, time day, and Allison and I looked at summative data, mm -hmm. um, how we would reach students that, you know, were struggling. So that was good, mm -hmm. you know, and that's important to take that time. But then I'm also, okay, you know, what will my students be doing to learn the information in the first place? So I think what freed me up the other day, because I just kept in my head, okay, how am I going to teach this unit on cell division? Because I've done it a number of different ways, and Allison had one idea, and you know, I purchased planaria for us, and I had that idea, and I just kind of went with starting with the planaria, and they don't know much about the cell cycle. I had them start, they made journals, and you can kind of see what I'm having the students do. Their first two pages is when I told them, you go out and find out about planaria. And I'd let them look at them, you know, and just obtain them the day before that. Then the next day they came in. Are they in. looking at them in a, with a microscope? Or uh -huh. are they doing? Okay. Uh -huh. So, but they didn't the first day. They just used magnifying glasses. And I talked a little bit about regenerative medicine. And, you know, they kind of understand the eukaryotic cell cycle. I just drew a circle and said, you know, this is how new cells are made. I said, and you all started as one cell, and now you're many cells. So how did that happen? which is kind of what NGSS talks about. You know, how does a single cell go? Because I had that out, I'm looking. Do you know I what standard it is? Yeah. So I'll show you right you have, here. Okay, you have your evidence. Because statements. I had it out and I was looking at it, and I'm like, how am I going to reach this? Um, where is it? Because I had it. And I feel like I'm scattered all over the place. But so this is what I want. This is what I want to be able to spend time on. And I feel like I'm being drugged down by spending so many hours in the grading. And this is what I want to be able to focus on creating these great learning opportunities. What is it that you're grading? Well, I'm grading essays, like summative essays, lab reports, uh, laboratory conclusions, homework, um, short formative assessments. How are those formative assessments given? Um, Typically, they require a student to hand write out responses. Sometimes, one time we did kind of a pretest, and that was multiple choice, which is where something like this technology we're working on could help make mm -hmm. that easier. Because all I need is cumulative data initially to kind of see where the class is maybe, and then I go into, okay, the ones that need 
the greater assistance, then I can pull them out. So would you um, say the way you're getting most of that information is by collecting it to then look through and, and grade? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And this is what I want to be doing to be creating the engaging lessons. And I know that, I mean, I have to assess students. I understand that's part of teaching, but I don't want that to be most of the time mm -hmm. that I'm not. Do you feel like the only way you can get information on what they have learned is by doing this? Or do you feel like the engaging activity can tell you what they've learned? Well, it told me a little bit. It can tell me a little bit, but that's much I mean, I'm not recording it. I'm just hearing students say, oh, well, those aren't, they're not breathing through those because a planaria breathes through their skin. So I know this individual in their background information search found that out mm -hmm. and was helping her partner. Okay. But I don't know that every student knows that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I will have these journals come in and I feel like I need to look at them because I'm asking the students to write down their observations. Mm -hmm. I'm asking them to do things and I feel when I ask students to write, then I should read. Okay, so you're taking a lot of the burden on because you feel like because you've asked them to do it, they deserve feedback on it and the only person that per can provide feedback is yourself. Mm, I think I do that. I mean, I, I have had peers give feedback. Sometimes I don't feel they give the best feedback always, and they miss things. So yeah, maybe it's just a thing where I feel like I need to ensure they're getting accurate information. I don't know. But at any rate, okay. Well, I that, think that was a lot of different. I know we pieces. always do that. Mm -hmm. So now we need to focus in. Don't shut that down. Let's look back oh. at that. So what I wrote down as our original goal, and this was a long time ago. Yeah, December. We wrote this down. And then we had grandbabies. Well, we didn't. You did. I did. And, and sickness. And I know. So all that it was jazz. hard to get back. So the goal that we wrote down was increase formative assessments in class with the infusion of technology to receive timely feedback to make modifications in instruction and to provide timely feedback to students. I think that's a great goal. Okay. So you, you feel that that's a good goal? I think that I'm still on board with that. Okay. Tell because me why. Because I think, number one, I don't get timely feedback. I'm collecting the work, and then it's piling up, and I'm not getting to it soon enough to adequately impact my instruction. So one, to impact instruction, and do students know where they're at at right. that time? No, because I'm taking, I think because it's so burdensome, it's taking too long for me to give them the feedback they need at the time they're giving me information, I should be able to respond to that quickly, and I'm not. Okay. I'm just not. Okay. So the infusion of technology, we had suggested the clickers to start mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. and you put in a tech ticket, and you got that installed on your computer, the Mimeo? I think so. I don't know. Okay, we'll check. Um, another possibility that we talked about was Spiral, and you saw that in action during a 612. I had used Spiral as one of our uh, pieces. I don't, I don't remember even that. remember it. Um, you had gotten into groups, and we defined the definition of a common form of assessment. Oh, okay. In our groups. So in that situation, you were in a group, and then you answered the question as a group. And then at the end, you took an individual and you answered a few questions on your own. And it was Google Doc? It was um, an app called Spiral. That's oh, a website. Okay. okay. So that's another possibility. There are a lot of different formative assessment type websites that you could use. 
and that I can definitely assist with any of those. Um, Google Docs was another one that we talked about, maybe using Google Classroom mm -hmm. as a possibility. How often do you do just quick checks of understanding, like whiteboard usage? How often? Hmm. Maybe, maybe once in a unit, and it's usually closer to the end, more as review. Okay. Do you do exit tickets with mm, students? Sometimes. Sometimes, but not frequently. Because I feel like, okay, there's another thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to look at it. <laughs> and if I give it, yeah. So I might be more likely to ask a question. You know, and ask, okay, if you think you know the answer, you know, raise your hands. Okay. And then call on one and then say, is that, you know, how many people agree with this answer? So I might do mm -hmm. that so that I just don't have the burden of paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then clarify it because there would be students who maybe didn't know the answer or didn't want to participate. I guess that gives them the option of not participating, you know, of not raising their hands. Some are more, um, they don't. Even if they might know the answer, they may not be inclined to raise their hand. Where if you give an exit t ticket, all have to write it down, right? Mm -hmm. I guess the other option would be to ask a question, have them write it down, and then give them the correct answer and just let them correct it. Although I wouldn't know then if they got it or they didn't, you see? Mm -hmm. So if I don't collect it, how do I know? Well, there's a couple different strategies that you could use with that. I think of like thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle. How comfortable are you with this? This is the rating system anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I've you done ask that. the I've question, the writing it down, they could turn to a partner and discuss it. Now you just listen overall to kind of what's going on and what you're mm -hmm. hearing. Mm -hmm. um, whiteboarding is a quick, easy way to see what people know, what they're knowing yeah. mm -hmm, without ever collecting it. Mm -hmm. If you do exit tickets, you don't necessarily have to put a grade on them. Mm -hmm. You can collect them and quickly sort, mm -hmm. just got it. Mm -hmm. It helps you understand where misconceptions might lie. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about your journal and that being an overwhelming collection yes. and now the physicality of all of those journals and trying right. to go through it. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a way that the information that they have there, you can still value that and they could use that to answer some sort of a question that you don't actually have to collect all of those, mm -hmm. but that it would show that they've used it? Mm -hmm. Or could you walk around during class and see mm -hmm. what they have in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they're in the lab, mm -hmm. yeah, I could do that. Yeah, because I see that each, <laughs> I mean, I, we just finished a unit. I just collected a photosynthesis lab from them. So now I have that to grade, which, and maybe you can, I'll show you sure. and you can tell me how to do this quickly. So here they, they completed this lab, right? So I had them answer questions and as they were doing it, then they had to come up with their procedure, and then this was like their final thing. I just had them do a mini poster. So do and you then need I have to, all this. Do you need to look at all of this? I don't know. I always have in the past given them credit for doing. What's the standard? This is, these are the standards. Okay, so their model that they're using is their graph, mathematical representation, and they develop, okay? 
So then you had them write their claim evidence and reasoning. To me, it feels like everything that you need would be on this back page. And then what about this? Just was this practice for them to get to here? Did this guide them? Yes. Okay. I usually give them credit for doing this. But does that show their learning at all? Well, it should show. Now here, this shows me between two compare. That doesn't really, see? She didn't even do it. Well, and then let's look at her last part. Can she pull it all together in the end? And that's, you know, where some, see? They do some of it. And they do that. How long do they have to complete this whole front piece? So I gave them, as homework, to read this and answer these questions. Then they had one day to do this procedure. And I told them for homework, they should graph their data to give them practice graphing data. Then they got together. I gave them a post-it note and I said, okay, we're going to test some environmental condition that, would, that could affect the rate of photosynthesis. And I gave them each a post-it note and they wrote down um, a researchable question. Color of light, amount of light. Then I had them go, like I asked one, okay, what did you have? And they said, amount of light. I said, okay, amount of light over here at this lab station. Did anyone else have that? And they went. And I helped to distinguish amount from color. And so students went to a lab station based on the question they came up with. Then I had them team up with one other person. And I said, OK, you need to form that into a research question. You know, write down your hypothesis and come up with a procedure based on what you did before. You just have to slightly change it. So I gave them time to do that. And then they implemented. They ran their experiment. And the next day, I had them, well, actually, I don't think I was here the next day, but the day after that, I had them, OK, now you're going to do a mini poster with your results. And this is what I'd like it to look like. And they had done a uh, full-size poster as group before, so now I was having them do individual ones. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for some, some of it was done, some of it not. And typically, I would grade it all. Mm -hmm. Which would take a an insane amount of time per student to read every single piece. Right. You know, and for some, I might just say, okay, it's completed. I'd look at graphs. Okay. There's no unit on time. That's a problem. Do you have a rubric created for this? Mm -mm. Um, I do not. I had a rubric for the last lab we did like this, but I had them write a lab report. And that's what I used for grading. So when I look at that one situation where you just pulled that up and you're like, well, she doesn't have the labels on this. Did she end up? Well, go ahead. Yeah, where was that one? Um, what was? I think I remember the name. Kerrigan, I believe. OK, so here. OK, so now let's look at her for now. And I'm sure that I was floating around the room mm -hmm. and reminding them to put units. And 
because that's what you want. In the end, this is really what you're you're needing mm -hmm. from the kids. Mm -hmm. When we look at the three standards that you're doing, this is what encompasses all of it. Mm -hmm. This whole front piece to me feels like practice mm -hmm. to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And so what if they don't practice? Well, then their then end product may not be as good. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And really, it's the end product that we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at the end product, I think there are easy ways that you can help them with that if you have a rubric created, mm -hmm. knowing this is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And if they have that opportunity to pass it with their lab partner, if they have one other person read it, or they practice themselves looking at the rubric. Mm -hmm so they know exactly what it is, the expectation. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm... But I also feel, and I know my expectation is axes are appropriately assigned, they're labeled, the units are there, but I feel at this point they should know to put units on a graph. And that when I have to tell them to do that, they're not as far along in their learning. So in coaching them to create a better graph, if they know that those are the requirements, those are the pieces that have to be present, how do they know that? Because we've done it over and over and over again. And but you think I need to tell them every time that you don't have to tell them every time. If you have a standard on a graph, this is the, these are the pieces that you need to have. And they have that, so they always know whenever I do a graph, these are the things I need to check. I need to check a title. I need to check my axes. I need to look at my scale. Is it right. appropriate? Right. Do I have a key? Right. So you think of all the things that you need to have for your graph. Uh huh. And now every time they do it, they should be able to pull that back out. Mm -hmm. or it's an electronic document somewhere. Mm -hmm. They should have that to refer back to. And on an assessment, you wouldn't give them that, would you? I don't know. Is that something that they have to memorize to know? Well, I would, I would hope they would. Because on an assessment, when I assess them over graphing skills, and I do it early on, I don't give them that. I mean, we've gone over it, they practiced it, they have, you know, rules for graphing. So at the very beginning of the year, you do that. Mm -hmm. And if they are unsuccessful at the very beginning of the year with that, and now here it is February, and now they're successful, does They've that learned. change their grade? Uh, on first semester? I think maybe, uh, probably not. I mean, we're two semesters. I can't go back and change first semester grade, can I? No. No. But it does show progression, and that was something we had started on with those science skills, you know. And I like the idea of having a rubric that they can refer to, but I don't feel like I hold their hand every time. But I know I was circulating the room when they were creating these, and I was giving them um, suggestions. And I think for expectations in different classrooms are possibly different. Graphs are not only just seen in science classrooms. I know. And so to remember the rules for every class can be sometimes difficult in trying mm -hmm. to remember, well, I'm going to get points deducted here. And if it's always about a point thing in tiny details, what is the information that it needs to show? And it needs to be based on what kind of information is this telling us. So it's they're applying this to the graph. And it's their communication tool. Right. So the, the emphasis needs to lie on how is this communicating any sort of information rather than, well, I need to make sure I have my label. Uh -huh. it, it, and it, when it is focused that way, Mm -hmm. It's a point gathering system mm -hmm. 
rather than what is this really telling me? Mm -hmm. If we can focus in on what is this communication tool? The, the standard says use a model. Well, that's, well, that's a different one. The, yes. Yeah, that's the one I'm... And mathematical representations to support claims. Well, this is all information that they need to be able to, to show. Mm -hmm. This has to show that. It has to communicate that. So, what standard was that? And, you know, I did pull in some non-priority standards there at the top. 1.5 was, I think, your priority, and then you have 2.4, 2.5. Two, two, Which was the mathematical? About 2.4. 2.4. So this was, and now this emphasis is on atoms and molecules being conserved, which... Okay, so then that, this piece doesn't necessarily show that. No. But your equation did. But this isn't your final assessment for this. No. But it, you know, I'm just saying this is something I'm faced with grading. Mm -hmm. And I think the reasoning component of this is the meat and potatoes of what they've done with this whole thing. Mm -hmm. This first part, yeah, there are questions in here that are important for them to be able to answer, mm -hmm. but this is a prescribed lab. Well, the first part is, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now they've taken what they've done that they practiced, mm -hmm. and now they're applying it. And mm -hmm. I think it's the application of it that you're, is where you see learning take mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you can focus on. And it's okay to not look at the rest of it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I've never. Yeah. I know, but you've got to let go of some of it, right? Because what I hear you say is that the grading is too much. It is. So the only way you can get around that is by letting some of it go. Mm. Do you think you understand your students better if you read all of this versus just this? Well, I would understand whether. They understood mm -hmm. why they were doing certain things. Is it enough to look at them quickly so it gives you an idea of where they're at? I mean, if you go to that one student that didn't have half of their sheet done, uh huh. It doesn't it impact their grade. It doesn't necessarily mean they don't know it, though. Mm -hmm. They may just not have chosen to do it. Right. And what is the incentive for them to do it if I don't grade it? Because if they've done it and it was practice, it helps them on their final piece. What's the point of doing it? Right. Is for them to learn about photosynthesis. So and the point of them to get it, to do it, shouldn't be because they're going to get points to do it. But I feel that some students are motivated that way. There are a lot that are. Is that what we want to focus on? Yeah. No, but I hate to take a motivator away. So here, what does that tell me? What does that tell you? That they just didn't take the time. Be, look, they put here. So here, they have like nothing. Their experiment didn't work out for them. Can they learn something from that? Well, they should. Here, I can like see, though, have. I wasn't expecting the UV. Well, UV light is not used in photosynthesis. They should not have expected any photosynthesis in either. So what was their original question? Okay. So what different types did they use? UV light and green light. Red light, blue light. So you're not seeing these green. Mm -hmm. So this part they got right. Mm -hmm. 
So then is there an additional question of, now you give this back to the student. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there might be a lot of different reasons why they didn't do the rest of this. Right. Ooh, ran out of time, I collected it. Is there a step that we're missing here in just, so we have a claim, we have evidence, we have our reasoning, then what would you do differently? And what, ex what would you expect if you changed it? Oh, you mean here? Yeah, in this situation, they said the lab didn't work. Mm -hmm. well, why not? Right, and that's, I did tell them, and it could have been that he was absent that day, I don't remember. You know, sometimes if they miss a day, they miss a lot. Right. And that could be why this looks like this, which I'm assuming that's why it came in like this. Because the other students had a day to work on it in class. Mm -hmm. But I did tell them, you know, if it didn't turn out the way you expected, you need to write that down and why you think uh, it didn't turn out that way. And I said, um, you know, there can be a number of reasons. You may not be able to exactly identify the reason, but, you know, by saying, I wasn't expecting the UV to not do anything. That tells me he doesn't understand that it shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of them sat and watched under the green thinking something was going to go, something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not working. It's not working. And so, well, let's think about this. What color light is this? You know, and it's like I have to lead them to that answer. That I would like them to be able to put pieces together. In their pre, their practice, mm -hmm. are they introduced to that at all? They're not a, introduced to the wavelength of light, but we had gone over the electromagnetic spectrum. We had talked about chlorophyll. We had talked about the wavelengths of light used by chlorophyll A. We had talked about why chlorophyll was green. So we, you know, they had some direct instruction on that before this lab. Were they able to draw a model of that? They did, well, they drew out the electromagnetic spectrum and they labeled where UV light was, visible light. But did they draw the model of plants using light? Uh, Do they understand that well, UV light, the wavelength, is what? Do you think they have that connection? Well, when we drew the electromagnetic spectrum, we talked about wavelength of light. And we put everything from gamma rays to radio waves. We listed the colors. We talked about, uh, you know, so I kind of gave notes. We drew a chloroplast. We drew light-hitting chlorophyll. Now, I didn't put the exact wavelength, but I just said light and how that absorbs solar energy and bumps those electrons up. So do you think that they were supposed to make that jump, that UV isn't going to do anything? Or do they think that with the spectrum, that means all of it does? Um, they should have known that it, no, because we talked about it using red and blue wavelengths of light. That's what plants use, visible light. Did did their model show green? When they when they drew the well, we use colored pencils, so chlorophyll they may have drawn green. And we talked about why it looked green. Because it was reflecting. Yeah. Okay. 
And so I'm wondering if, I mean, maybe the rest of them got it. Oh, I don't but know. For this student, no, he didn't. Mm -mm. I mean, for some. Yeah. And here, the data. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't want to. So sunlight, red, green. So she didn't even do the total number of leaf disks floating. So I'm not sure. So I think there's a few different things that we've yeah, been so talking about here. For grading, yep. what can So I let's do? go back to our, our goal here. So it's increased formative assessments. Now, why do you want to increase formative assessments? So that you can provide modifications to instruction. If you were to able to see that student not understand the wavelength, how right. does that change your instruction? That's And so now... I'm understanding that they don't know that. And we're already on to the next unit mm -hmm. because they turned this in as a product to me after the test because we did the lab two days before the test. Okay. So what you say that's not very timely, mm -hmm. is it? No, well, and especially if you're saying now we're done with the unit, now we're moving on to something else and right. now they don't need that anymore right I mean do they do they need to know that well we're talking about cell division now how are they going to use photosynthesis and cell division I guess to create a plant eventually it'll need energy to grow when the seed is all used up you could tie it back in, but it's not like they're going to use that specific piece of information now. I don't think so. And do you think that one specific piece of information is important for the entire scope of the course? Probably not. One specific piece of information, no. But the inability to process information is a bigger okay. problem, I think. So when we are looking at claim evidence reasoning and the use of models in mathematical computation, mm -hmm. we're focusing on science and engineering practices. Mm -hmm. You're doing that through the vehicle of biology mm -hmm. and teaching biology content, focusing on those skills. Mm -hmm. And those skills are what cycle throughout. Mm -hmm. So when you know that you have the skills that are important for a unit, you know that you need to focus in on giving timely feedback on those skills. Mm -hmm. And it's also important for you to understand where kids are at with that. Yes, and so now, well, okay, the skill, that feedback is good, you know, to go back and say you must have, you know, your graphs, numbers mean something in units. So you have to, you know, to go back and clarify that would be important for what's coming up. Yeah. So what if you, when you're thinking forward, because we can't change this now, and this has happened, mm -hmm. and I don't know what other piles you have for grading, but oh, I, have I know you have essays, you have lab reports, mm -hmm. conclusions, short formative, short answer. And homework. You, And with homework, when you say homework, what is that? Well, I give them a reading assignment and expect them to read it and complete a short assignment before they come to class. Okay. So that they have a foundation. And when do you grade it and hand it back? I typically will go over the answers so they get feedback immediately on whether they were right or wrong. They can write the correct answer in. Um, sometimes I just grade that on completion. You know, did you make an effort? Okay. Are and you good with that? So that's that. not as bad because they're kind of grading it. Mm -hmm. They're grading their own work right away. They know if it's right or wrong. They have the option to write the correct answer so they can study it when I hand it back. And for a test. when you give it back, they have it in time for an assessment so they can use it as Most a of the time. 
most of the time. So, I try. So what you're focusing on here is feedback for the students and feedback for you. So if that's timely, that helps. What I hear you say is that you need additional pieces here, that you can get quick information mm -hmm. from kids, mm -hmm. and you need to not have the paper shuffle. <laughs> that's right, because collecting the papers, passing them back, I mean, yeah. maybe I just need to know, do you know this? Mm -hmm. And I know there's some who copy outside of class on an assignment. I don't weigh it very heavily, but I give them some points for doing it. Um, so if, they're, if you're concerned about the learning component of it. And that's what I am. Yeah. Have they learned anything in that process? I think they have. I mean, they've learned to read a textbook that's scientific, which is something that's a skill that they will need moving forward. Mm -hmm. So that's important reading comprehension. And I, when I make study guides, I don't have it find the missing word in the sentence. They have to process it, and it's usually short, you know, maybe two to four pages of reading. That's it. What would you like to try? We, we think I we have the Mimeos installed. Do you want to try that? Yep. And then do you think moving forward, like next year with the Chromebooks, what would be a good way to... So Mimeo wouldn't be one of those that I, I would know. invest a lot of time in at this point. You wouldn't? Mm -mm. For one, there's a lot of pre-set up for it. Um, for two, if they start going bad, which they are going to... There's We're not no going to replace them. So that's why I want to know what would be a good alternative to well, that. Well, I think Spiral is a good one. Um, the Formative Now, I think it's called. There's several different ones. And Carol Von Tersch can definitely help you with those, too. Okay. Because she's done quite a few different after-school sessions. Are Google Forms good? You can do Google Forms. Yeah, those are I mean, what is something? But can I reuse them? Once I make them, can mm -hmm. I reuse them? Sure. I just clear the data? Or? Um, well, we so with a form, and we can I can put one together super quick just because to show I you what that ends up looking like. I could have done that on that multiple choice rather than hand yes. rate it. Yeah. And the kids could get their immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something. So I'm going to look into a Hi. form. And we're going to All set it up as after minutes. school and evening practices have been canceled for today. I just need to, All something after that school doing and evening practices physically. have been canceled for today. All of these. Yeah, this. Um, yeah, technology is not making my life easier. Right. <laughs> and um, I think it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a mock one just so you can see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Do you want to meet Monday? Yes, I could do sixth, but not third, because, well, no, I could do third. It doesn't matter, either one. Yeah. And then you can show me what it looks like on the teacher end, mm -hmm. so I can see, and how easy I can move the grades over. Yep. Because and I know Kaylee does a lot of the Mimeo. Yeah, and, and you can do it that way. I, you're going to still have to do a transfer either way, because nothing feeds right into campus. Actually, they use a lot of um, Moodle quizzes, and that's another option for you, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not as savvy with that. Yeah. We have I, people in the department that are. Right. And that's okay. what I've set up. So, okay, well, good. So that this, will make I'm going to re-share this with you. I'll type up some notes on here, just kind of what mm -hmm. we've talked about. I'll reshare this with you just so you have it. Okay. And then um, I had given you that article of Grading Easier. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, did you read through that? I, I haven't yet. Would you do that? Mm -hmm. And then you can share with me what I sure. need to focus on. And then there's also this other piece. Should I not take it tonight? I'm worried about the roads. I'm just yeah, concerned for you. Well, you're driving, right? Yeah. 
So why don't you stop by at the end of the day? We'll see what weather looks like. All right. Okay, so we'll meet Monday? Yes. Can I go to Mr. Conjurer? Well, come right back. Irina, I do not have your lab. Ah. Your lab. Yes. 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 I have two people who didn't turn in their lab notes. I need, I need to finish the grout. But I need oh, my homework. I, do, I have everything besides the grout.